Hello, my name is John Humanic. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is how do you know that your boyfriend or even fiance is husband material? I'm gonna go over five critical points that will help you determine that the man you're dating is the one you should spend the rest of your life with. Who you marry is one of the most important decisions in your life. Stick around for this whole video because it's going to be great. Many people talk about Proverbs 31 women, but did you know there is a chapter in the Bible for godly husbands? It's in Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 21. Let's read it and break it apart to get these five amazing traits. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church his body of which he is the savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave herself up to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one has ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are all members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Before we dive into these five amazing traits, remember, do all things in love. Your current boyfriend may not exhibit any of these characteristics that I'm about to talk about. That doesn't mean that God can't work on him and will allow him to come along the way. These are more about the destination than the journeys. You should be able to see that he's along the path and maybe just even starting. Just because you don't see progress doesn't mean that God isn't already doing his part. Keep that in mind. What are these five critical traits? Let's start with number one, submission. Now, the verses read that the wives should be submissive to her husband. It also reads that the husband must be submissive and responsive to his wife's needs, meaning that the man you're currently dating should be meeting your love languages, any specific needs, and wants as often as possible. Submission is more than being obedient and setting aside one's desires for one another. It's genuinely caring and putting others first. This is why Paul references Christ in this description. Jesus came down from heaven, removed all his glory, made himself nothing, took on the flesh of man, and walked a sinless life, only to die, rise from the dead, and return to the right hand of the Father, all to redeem the family of God back to him. That's submission. We see that even further when Jesus was in the garden and asked to have the cup pass before him, which represented the final torment at the hands of the Romans. But even still, Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Submission is critical because that's a form of obedience and obedience to God's call on his life, obedience to the place he has in yours. He should be willing to put your needs in front of his. It shouldn't be a one-way street where you're constantly supporting him and you don't get anything in return. It goes the same for you. You can't keep taking and not giving either. That's important to know because this is the first thing Paul lists. Order matters. If your needs aren't being addressed now, if he wants all the time and continues to take without giving, that's a really good chance you're going to have to have a conversation about managing those needs and wants. You need balance in physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual needs. You don't want to neglect this area in your relationship. It will be very hard to overcome and even harder to get him to embody these traits after marriage. Number two is the head of household, or I like to describe it a great leader. Leaders that are great have common characteristics throughout all of history. 
in business and in military and even in government. They are servant first. They understand their people and lead by example. They can be highly motivational, encouraging, and comforting. Leaders aren't afraid to correct their people, but they do so with love and compassion. They are empathetic and kind, patient, willing to endure people's inability to change, but rather be the guidepost that people can fix their future towards and follow. Great leaders are the embodiment of Jesus Christ. Jesus wasn't afraid to challenge people when they needed it. He wasn't afraid to lift them up when they were down. He watched out for the little person and he was willing to mentor and mentor and mentor some more the people given to his charge. He never cast off anyone and that was given to him. Rather, they left on their own accord. Your future husband should be doing the same. Is he continually encouraging you to spend more time with Christ? Does he ask questions like, are you in your word? Are you setting aside for thanksgiving, praise, and worship in your quiet time, in your prayer time? Are you living out a righteous life? Your future husband shouldn't be afraid to let you know when you've gone astray, not in a condemning or overbearing manner, rather pointing out the areas that should be fixed, how they should be fixed and supporting and guiding you along the way. No matter how challenging it may seem, this is really important. Husbands are given charge over their wives, meaning that it's their responsibility to steward the daughter of the king, which is you. You can go no further and look at how Adam handled the situation in the garden. God specifically told Adam, not Eve, to protect the Garden of Eden. He knew Satan was going to sneak in and try to dislodge Adam from his post. Adam was present when Eve ate the forbidden fruit. I'll even go one step further. God didn't start questioning with Satan or with Eve. He started with Adam because he was in charge. The sin at the garden was Adam's fault. Sure, Eve and Satan fell too, but Adam was supposed to protect her, and he stood by and watched. A head of household doesn't do that. He doesn't stand by and let things get out of hand. He doesn't allow the devil to sneak into his house and torment his wife, children, or even community that surrounds you guys. Your boyfriend should be showing qualities of taking charge and willing to go to battle in the times he needs. He needs to be a great leader, supporting, guiding, and ushering you into a better version of you. In the same way, don't become a barrier to change. If his words align with scripture, then he's really trying to help you grow. Everyone learns a given way, whether through action, written, or even by teaching. Learn how you learn and share that with him so he can meet you where you're at. Number three, husbands are to love their wives willing to pray over them continually. God's love is very descriptively described in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. There are 16 characteristics that describe love. Love in God's kingdom is action-oriented. It's expressed through selflessness, care, and deep embodied emotions. Your boyfriend shouldn't be afraid to pray over you continually, washing, cleansing, and keeping you pure with the word of God. Jesus emulated this throughout his entire ministry, constantly interceding, praying, and imploring people with words that lift up, pull forward, and break through, freeing them from the bondage they get caught in their day-to-day life. This is an extremely powerful because love breaks down all the barriers that prevent relationships from thriving. Godly love sets the stage for great opportunity for great relationships and thriving next level experiences. It's the undercurrent that powers everything in the kingdom of God. Love is a compass showing and orienting people in the right direction. Love guides, corrects, and protects. Godly husbands don't just love their wives, but they love themselves and doing so they prioritize their own health. They're willing to take Sabbath days. They exercise, they eat well. They're mindful that their bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. These traits should be emulated by their current actions. Again, he may not embody all of them at this time, but it should be something he works towards one step at a time. Godly men will encourage you to take care of yourself, to balance work life, have fun, and play with family and friends, and especially take time for yourself. Your boyfriend should be emulating some of these traits already, or they should be encouraged to do so. 
This is especially important because godly men orient themselves towards God all the time. They want to be in the presence of God. They want to experience God's peace, God's joy, and his powerful kindness, his hopeful expectations for the day. Every single day they see an opportunity where people see failure. They see greatness where people see nothing. Just as important, godly men aren't afraid to love their enemies, to love those who had attacked them, especially in this day and age, those who do so verbally. They aren't afraid to pray for their enemies. They aren't afraid to intercede in the courts of heaven. They don't see people or circumstances through worldly eyes. They see them through the eyes of the Father who sees everything with love and perfection. Number four, a man's willing to leave his parents, his family, and his friends behind to build a new family with you. This is going to be a challenging thing for some people, especially if that man comes from a godly family that's close-knit and supportive. Whether they're a part of a church or not, this can be a difficult journey that in reality can take years to fully take hold and create a space in the environment for your future marriage to thrive. While red flags may present themselves in your current relationship today, that doesn't mean in the future that those problems will be present. You just need to be mindful of where you're going compared to where you are today. This is not limited to a son who's close to his mother or even his father. It can apply to his brother or sister. I'm sure some of you will have a boyfriend or fiance that's very close to a small clique or even large clique of friends. They hang out and do things together. They may even work together, have grown up together. They may have gone to school, play sports. It's important to know that there are boundaries that are established before and after marriage. The time that they spend with their family and friends before marriage will be different than what happens after marriage. It's important to know that even though that the relationship may be skewed currently, that doesn't mean it will remain that way in the future. They just have to be willing to make the necessary time adjustments to make sure he's spending time with you and he prioritizes you over them. And yes, outside of God, once you're married, you're his number two. Believe it or not, there isn't a situation that can happen in his family or friends that prioritizes them over you. There's none, especially if you end up having to become a caretaker for your parents or his parents. Even in that situation, they have to take a backseat to you. You also need to be mindful that your future children don't pull you away from him. That's a snare many wives get caught up in. Balance is important. Change in this area can take a long time, but that doesn't mean you both can't grow in the process. Number five, he's needed to be holy unto you. In this digital world where pornography, gambling, adultery, work spouses, and work girlfriends are prevalent, he's bombarded everywhere he goes. Your boyfriend is being exposed to a litany of temptation, unlike any time in the history of the world. At any point in time, a man can pick up a cell phone, an iPad, go to a bar, or any place and be completely overwhelmed with all forms of impurity, destructive thoughts, unhealthy relationships, and so much more. And while this is not limited to men, because women can suffer from this too, we know that this is clearly a tactic that the enemy uses against men, because if he can get the men to sleep around in their mind or even in their body, he can divide the marriage or the relationship very quickly. It'll be important to know that when your boyfriend has eyes only for you, this is a great thing. If he's willing to literally open doors, if he's willing to bring you presents, take you out on dates, overflow you on your birthday and holidays, he's oriented his heart and mind towards you. It's important to carry a heart of gratitude during this time, especially if you're coming from a place where your needs may or may not have been met. Jesus always accepted gifts. He never turned them away. Throughout the entire Bible, he knew even if he didn't use them himself, he could bless someone else with it. Cultivate a space where your relationship becomes centered around Jesus Christ. There's always three people in a relationship. There's always three people in a marriage. You, him, and Jesus Christ. 
Christ-centered relationships can never be broken by the world in any way, though you may run into rocky situations that may challenge or even threaten your relationship. If you've got Jesus on your side, you will always be victorious. The word tragedy doesn't even exist in ancient Hebrew, meaning that no matter how dire your situation may seem in the natural, God's not done in the supernatural. In closing, your current boyfriend or fiance may or may not exhibit all five traits at this time. In fact, your current boyfriend may not exhibit any of these traits. But the key part in all of this is to understand that everyone in the kingdom of God is a work in progress. Continue to encourage him to grow in Christ. You'll want to see forward motion in these five areas. This is a perfect video to share with him to talk about those critical aspects. These characteristics will set him apart, allowing him to be an amazing husband. Some people may already inherently move towards that direction, but some people just don't know and requires this knowledge in order to go to that level. It's important to give him grace as they're growing because you are growing and in some instances you may be ahead of him in your faith. Be a good beacon for him to fix his eyes upon. You can point him to Jesus and allow him to walk this beautiful journey with you together. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this content edifying, I'd like you to prayerfully consider becoming a partner with this ministry. You can go to our Patreon site, which is in the description, or search John Humanic on their website. There you can sign up. All Destiny Impact partners will receive a free book and everyone enjoys many more benefits while helping us spread the gospel to the whole world. God bless.